Hey y'all, welcome to Adventures with Aggie brought to you by Coco's Coffee House. Today we have coach Rob Taylor. He's head coach of the Auburn University wheelchair basketball team. And he's going to tell us a little bit about how you can play collegiate level wheelchair basketball. Please welcome coach Rob. Coach Rob, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for, for having me on. Awesome. I'm so excited to meet you and get to know a little bit more about you and what you do. Um, but first, let's just kind of start with some background. Can you tell me who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Rob Taylor. I'm the head coach at uh, Auburn University with the wheelchair basketball team. Uh, we just completed uh, my fifth year here with the team, uh, but I have been involved in wheelchair basketball for uh, over 20 years working with uh, a number of different programs and a number of different teams, uh, but most recently here with the team at Auburn. And aside from my position with Auburn, I'm also the assistant coach with the U.S. men's Paralympic team uh, and have been with them for the last eight-ish years now that we're rolling into year nine with, uh, with Tokyo being pushed back. I've been, I've been a part of the, the U.S. national team for, uh, for many, many years as well. Love it. I love it. Lots of experience, which is really exciting. Um, but can you kind of go back to the beginning and tell me how you initially got involved with wheelchair basketball? Sure. So uh, for me and, and probably what you heard last week when you had your talk with the, the NWBA, uh, it falls back to family. So uh, my uncle has polio and he played wheelchair basketball his whole life. Um, so I was introduced to it at a very young age where I would go uh, to their games, I would go to their practices and help out uh, and would just kind of be that, that kid on the sideline that would grab the shag basketball, uh, toss it back to the players. And then when practice was over, jump in the chair and, and try my hand at, at shooting and, and push the chair around. Um, so I got involved because of my uncle and, and from there just kind of grew within the sport. Um, did my undergrad at the, at the University of Illinois and, and started helping out with uh, both the programs that they have there, the men and the women's team. Uh, and again, my, my first year I spent in the chair as an additional practice player to allow us to kind of fill out a roster when, when need be and, and, uh, and push to practice and compete against the men and the women on the team and, uh, and kind of got the experience that way of, of playing the sport, even though I'm an able-bodied individual. Um, and then it was just kind of worked my way up through the program there and uh, met the right people at the right time. They got me connected with, uh, with the U.S. program. And then uh, I've kind of been a across the United States at different programs. So uh, after college, moved out to Arizona and coached uh, a women's team out there with the Phoenix Mercury. Uh, then moved back to Chicago, where I'm from originally, and, and coached a juniors team there, the Windy City Warriors. Uh, and then had the opportunity to take the job here at Auburn. So moved the family down here to Alabama and, uh, and haven't looked back. So for, for me, and again, a lot of people within this sport, it's, it's family driven. So um, it was seeing what my uncle did and, and the sport and wanting to be involved in sport myself. Um, I was also a sports management major in college. Um, and this was kind of a, a way for me to stay involved with, with the sport or with a sport and, uh, and really fell in love with it and have been able to create a career out of it. That's awesome. I guess two things kind of as a follow-up to that. One major thing that I've learned after speaking with the NWBA for two weeks of episodes and now you is that this sport is family. Like everybody knows each other and everybody cares about each other too, which is something really, really cool and unique, I think, to wheelchair basketball, at least that I've learned on my show. Um, it's been amazing. And it did start in your family and now you've made a whole new family around it, which is great but it's, I haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, and then the second thing I was going to say, I didn't think you sounded like you were from Auburn. So I was going to ask you that too. <laughs> uh, originally from Chicago, but kind of <laughs> bounced around here and there. And uh, maybe in this interview, y'all will drop out of me, but, uh, but probably more, more or less a you guy type thing. <laughs> That's funny. I, I accidentally, my first episode, I said, hey, y'all, welcome to Adventures with Aggie. <laughs> and now every single episode, I have to say it. <laughs> that's what everybody expects it now, right? Hey, y'all, that's right. fine. But it's okay if it slips out. I say it all the time. Okay. Um, okay. Love it. Awesome. Well, how, um, how did you land at Auburn? How has this process been kind of building the team the last five years? I was watching the college tournament a few weeks ago, which is super fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, how's it been? I, you know, it, Auburn's got one of the newest teams within the college division. So we've only had uh, an adaptive sports program for about 10 years. 
um, and really have only had a basketball team for about the last six or seven years. So it's it's definitely been a challenge trying to build a new college team within the collegiate division. You're going up against teams that have been around for uh, for forever since the, since the beginning of wheelchair basketball um, and in other programs that have have a long history for the last 20, 40 years. Uh, so coming in, it's it's been trying to build the program, uh, trying to grow the team, uh, but more importantly, trying to uh, grow the knowledge of the, of the sport here at Auburn University and then uh, across uh, across the junior division. So that way they don't look at us as just a new team. Uh, they see us as a team that's kind of uh, growing and developing. So the, the outreach part is important for us uh, here on campus. The education piece is important to us um, so that way we can build those relationships and start uh, establishing ourselves as, uh, as a legitimate college team, um, both from uh, a financial support from the university, but then also being able to draw in some some top recruits from across the country. So we've we've been very fortunate that the relationships that we have here on campus are strong relationships. Um, they love our program. They support our program in a number of different ways. And we've been able to go out there and recruit some uh, some uh, talent that have really helped us out. And you probably watched some of the games at nationals. And uh, that was the last couple of years of bringing in uh, in our opinion, some of the top recruiting class in the country, and it allowed us to get to the position that we are in this year at nationals. And um, you know, our our kids this year did a great job of of following all the policies and procedures that were in place. It was a difficult season um, with it being a COVID year and and everything that comes along with playing within restrictions and testing. Um, and our kids did great this year of making sure that. They did what they needed to do to stay healthy so we could have a full season and compete a full season. Uh, and then we had a great finish at Nationals with the third place finish, which was the best in program history for uh, such a new team. Uh, it's it's quite an accomplishment for us and something that we're very proud of. Definitely, congrats. I was watching, watching from New York. <laughs> but super fun to watch. Um, that was what I was gonna ask you about kind of the awareness and education piece of this, because I think everybody knows Auburn is a sports school. That's, we know that, right? Um, but how are you kind of building the awareness around the adaptive sports program? And what kinds of tools do you use to educate people? Because I think there are lots of people in the world that don't even know that wheelchair basketball exists. Um, so how do you kind of make those first steps to educate people on the sport? Yeah, you know what, I think one of the great things in and being from uh, the South yourself, you probably find that everyone down here is is very opening and welcoming. So uh, for me, it's just setting up meetings with uh, with the right people in charge and just uh, explaining to them a little bit more about our program, about our sport uh, and about our team. And then not being afraid to ask for something if there's something that you need and, and understanding that they may tell you no, and that's okay, you move on to, to, to the next person to try to help grow your program. Uh, so for me down here, it was, uh, talking with and, and creating relationships with administration. Um, and then the other thing that's really helped us out is creating those relationships um, with our able-bodied counterparts. So uh, Bruce Pearl, who's the head coach of the, the men's team here on campus, um, Coach Flo, who is the former head coach of the women's team on campus. We just hired a new women's coach the other day and haven't had a chance to meet her yet. Um, it, it's meeting those coaches. It's meeting their coaching staff uh, and really showing them like, listen, we play the same sport that you guys do. We just do things a little bit differently. Our guys are in chairs. You know, they're not, they can't make the lateral cuts that you guys can make, uh, but the sport's exactly the same. And, and once you get people of importance like Coach Pearl on board uh, and he understands it, uh, he's able to kind of help you sell it as well. And then we've got other relationships with uh, other coaches and other sports uh, and have done some collaboration between our team and uh, the swimming team, the baseball team, uh, so that way, all the student athletes, whether they're in a chair or able-bodied, they all understand it's just sport and everyone's out there competing. So I, I think that's the important thing, whether you're starting a new program or you've got an established program, regardless of what the sport is, it's building those relationships with other people uh, and helping or having them help you grow the exposure of your sport. Definitely, definitely. The community building around the sport. I've seen a lot of it, even just in the last few months that I've been doing this deep dive in wheelchair basketball for the show is there's there is a community out there around it and people support it. It's just the knowing what it is, is 
the tough part at the beginning. People, if you don't know, you don't know, and <laughs> you have to learn. So um, that's what even my team was doing during this process. They were like, we're doing what? We're doing what for the series? And I was like, it's so cool. You have to know. <laughs> it, it is one of those things where, you, you know, at first you may be like, well, wheelchair basketball, what's that about? Yeah. But after you watch a game, after you watch five minutes of a game, you're, you're sucked in and you're watching the full game and you're, you're waiting for that next one to start up. Uh, it, it is one of those sports that really draws people in because it is different than, than the able body version or, or any sport that you may be used to. It's, it's a lot more physical. There's a lot more contact than you would expect. Um, and, and it is that it's, it's a competitive sport. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Let's kind of move into, I guess, talking about recruiting. Um, so what does it take to play collegiate level wheelchair basketball? You know, I, I think the first part is, is the exposure for our high school athletes is the exposure to different colleges, to different coaches and having the ability to be seen. Now, some of that is coaches will go out to tournaments and, and watch kids and, and recruit kids or at least watch games. Um, but another part of it is those high school student athletes reaching out to different colleges or universities that they're interested in. And it's making that first step or that first connection uh, with college coaches. Uh, I don't have an opportunity always to go out to the West Coast to see the athletes out there or even all the way up to New York to see some of the, uh, the junior athletes out there. Um, and not all junior athletes compete at the national tournament. So if there are athletes out there that are interested in Auburn or interested in any of the other universities that offer wheelchair basketball teams, uh, to me, the first step is reaching out and making contact with that college. Um, I'll be honest, I, I find that the kids that take control of their education or that are interested in attending Auburn and reach out to me before I have a chance to reach out to them are usually the ones that have a great interest in coming to Auburn kids that are very engaged with their education uh, and kids that ultimately end up at Auburn. I think that's the important part is as you're taking control of your education, it's understanding what does it take to get into some of these universities that you're reaching out to. Uh, Auburn is a difficult school to get into in terms of requirements for, for GPA and test scores. So having that conversation with me early on, freshman year, sophomore year, so that way you understand what it takes to get admitted into Auburn is huge. If you're waiting until the end of your junior year or your senior year and your grades aren't where they where they should be, it's going to be hard for you to be admitted into Auburn. So I think early communication with coaches. And if you've got game film, send me game film. I'm, I'm, I'm used to watching it and, and, I, and I'll watch game film all the time. Um, but that gives me a better idea of who you are as a player. Um, and then if I've got an opportunity to come to a tournament and watch you play, I'll do what I can to, to get to one of those tournaments. And then we can start having dialogue that way as well. But I, I think the big thing is just the exposure piece. And for wheelchair basketball, it's, it's a little tougher with how spread out we are, uh, the inability sometimes for coaches to get from one coast to the other. So that's why the national tournament's great. Um, or some of the larger tournaments that the junior teams put on. Uh, the Big Peach Slam in Atlanta usually brings in eight to 10 teams. Um, Pioneer Classic up at Lakeshore Foundation in Birmingham usually brings in a number of different teams. Um, so these regional uh, tournaments help out too, because it allows coaches to kind of get there and see a good number of kids as, as they're coming through the junior pipeline. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. So you talked about the requirements for the academics, right? Getting to the school is one step. Um, but what are some kind of technical skills and things that you think these players should work on in order to be at that level? Sure. So I, to me, it's your ability to be coached. Are you coachable? You know, it's easy to say, hey, I want a kid that can knock down three pointers at a clip of 40%, that can knock down 90% from the free throw line, you know, put all these high numbers out there. Uh, what I'm looking for is a kid that has basketball IQ and a kid that can be coachable. Um, if you understand the basics and you've got a high basketball IQ, but you listen to your coaches, you work well with your teammates, and most importantly, you listen to your parents, uh, to me, that's someone that would be a great addition to our family, our program here. Um, yes, the ability to handle the ball with your dominant and your non-dominant hand, your ability to, to knock down shots, uh, your ability to seal, your ability to, to, to read the court. Those are all great attributes to have. Um, but those are all things that we can work on here at the college level. So for me, as I'm recruiting a kid, academics is important. But then also, how do you interact with others involved with your program from your coaches, teammates, parents, 
administrators, game officials, and opponents. I try to take a look at all that stuff because that speaks to the character of that individual. And for us here at Auburn, we try to recruit kids with strong character, uh, knowing that they've got basketball as their background, if they're strong character kids, that'll help us establish the program that, uh, that we want to grow here at Auburn. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. I guess this is kind of a twist on that question for you, but what do you say to athletes who are kind of like trying to figure out where to go? Like they have some choices. Like if you were to recruit me and say, I need to come to Auburn to play wheelchair basketball, what would you say to me to try to sell it? Well, I think this, the same thing that, that I tell other kids and other coaches tell their kids that they're recruiting is come to campus, come and check out campus. Number one, if you haven't been to Auburn and I don't know if you have or not, you'll fall in love with Auburn and you can want to come to school at Auburn. Uh, but I think you need to go to that campus and picture yourself there, whether it's here or whether it's one of the other programs is, can you picture yourself on that campus for the next four to five years? Can you picture yourself working with me for the next four to five years or playing alongside of some of the kids that we have on the team here for the next four to five years? Because really you're making a commitment for the next four to five years on somewhere where you could see yourself living somewhere where you want to call home. Uh, and I think that's the important part for any kid, whether you're considering Auburn or another school, is come and spend a little bit of time here to see if it's something that, that you can deal with. Can you deal with 70 degree weather? Can you deal with perfect temperature, very little hills on campus? Uh, you know, an SEC program that uh, or SEC school that has a strong history in football and most currently basketball. Um, if you can deal with that kind of stuff, Auburn's the right place for you. you know, some kids, they prefer the cold and the snow and then they move up to New York or places like that. Uh, but I think it's one of those things that whatever school you're considering, do a campus visit, get to know the coach, get to know the, the team, and then figure out if that campus is the right feel or the right fit for you. Definitely. You said 70 degrees. I was thinking like 100 degrees. <laughs> That's the summertime. During the school year, it's, it's always 70 degrees and beautiful. Okay, of course, of course. <laughs> it snowed here for months and I was not used to that in New York. That was something really hard for me. But I do miss the 70 degree school years. I miss it. But um, awesome. Let's kind of let's talk about practice and training. I actually had um, a high school wheelchair basketball player submit some questions and he was just asking what a, um, a typical kind of practice or training session looks like for your team. Sure. So we, we practice five days a week. We practice Monday through Friday. Uh, our practices are first thing in the morning. We run about 6 a.m. till 8, 8.30, depending on, uh, on class times. And the reason that we run that early is nobody has classes before 8 o'clock on a college campus. So everyone is available to have practice. Uh, trying to find an afternoon time slot that works for uh, 10 or 12 different schedules is, is pretty tough to do. Um, so our practices, you know, we kind of split it up throughout the season where early on in the season, we're still working on uh, kind of knocking the rust off and, and getting back to the basics, some of the individual ball skills, uh, you know, individual defensive skills. And then we start building on that throughout the course of the season. Uh, so in a practice session, you'll find some individual skills that we'll be doing. Uh, then we'll build up to two on two, three on three, uh, and then five on five skills, uh, you know, everyone would love to come to practice and just scrimmage all the time. And uh, it, it's not always the most effective thing to do. So you want to be able to take that time to work on individual skills, which then bleeds into the two on two, three on three. And eventually you can get to your five on five stuff um, outside of our, our morning practices. Um, we've got strength and conditioning coaches on the team here that work with all of our athletes. They've got required strength and conditioning sessions uh, two to three times a week. Um, where they're in the weight room working on uh, maximizing their strengths and minimizing their opportunities uh, to make sure that they can become the, the best athletes that they can. And outside of that, we do film session once a week with the team. Uh, that's usually a, a late afternoon or an early evening film session. Um, and then there's, there's plenty of time for them to come in for individual work, whether that's shooting workouts or um, continued one-on-one -on -one work with me where we can put them through different workouts to help, again, maximize their strengths or help overcome some of the obstacles that they have. Um, but that's kind of a typical week is it, it's, it's a lot of basketball to balance with a lot of schoolwork to try to balance with the social life. Um, so, it, you know, they they put in just as much work, if not more than than their able body counterparts uh, from from a student athlete standpoint. But uh, they all seem to enjoy it. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to play at the college level, really that's what it's going to take is, is it's going to take that kind of commitment. 
definitely def that's a it's a lot of time it's a lot of time at early morning hours but um i think when when you love it you know it's worth it and it doesn't feel like work if you're waking up at 5 a.m every day <laughs> exactly but um awesome so I was, I'm curious about how this work that you're doing with Auburn, how much of this kind of schedule protocols and things, how does that reflect with what you do with the men's national team? Are the kinds of coaching and stuff, is that similar or how does that kind of relate? Yeah. So in terms of the schedule overlap, um, you know, our college season runs from fall till spring uh, and then work with the Paralympic team usually runs spring through summer or early fall, whenever the Paralympics or the, the major tournament that we have is. So uh, there's, there's not a ton of, of overlap from that standpoint, which uh, is great because it allows me to focus on the Auburn team when I'm here. Um, and then when the summer comes around, the university is great and supportive and understanding of the work that I'm doing with the national team and allows for me uh, to travel with them. Uh, in terms of the overlap, um, the, the style that we play is pretty similar from, from one team to the other. Um, a, a few adjustments just based off the, the skill level that we have here at Auburn is, is uh, different than what we have on the national team. Um, but it's, it's the same sort of concepts. And uh, that, that's one of the things that people ask me all the time, like, hey, what, you know, what do you guys do that's so different? And it's, it, it's nothing. Um, if, you, if you talk to the other coach with the other coaches with the national team, they'll tell you our goal is just to out execute the, uh, the basic fundamentals better than the other team that we're playing. Yes. It, it helps to have players like Matt Scott and Steve Serio that can, you know, knock down and, and Jake Williams that can knock down some big three point shots for you and, and have a big guy like Nate Hines or, or Brian Bell that can dominate the inside game for you. Um, but really it's, it's just executing the fundamentals at, at a high level. Um, that's what we try to do on the national team. And, that's what we try to do here at Auburn. Uh, but again, the guys that we have playing on a national team have played at that level for a number of years where we're working to get the guys here at Auburn up to that level. And, and uh, a number of those guys have been able to close the gap and, and they're close to being national team members or at least having tryouts for the for national teams or U23 teams. Um, but there really is, uh, the differences are, are pretty minimal. Um, I would say there's probably more similarities in terms of what we try to do uh, between the two teams. Again, personnel changes on each team, so you, you have to adjust the offense accordingly, um, but it, it's roughly the same. Awesome. So what are what are you up to now, from now until Tokyo happens? <laughs> so, yeah, so right now basketball's over, and, and we've, uh, we've got a couple of our athletes here at Auburn that are going to try out wheelchair tennis. Um, so I have transitioned temporarily into a wheelchair tennis coach. Um, so we, we've got a tournament coming up this weekend and then a national tournaments in Orlando uh, the following weekend. Uh, and then once that's over, the attention really shifts to, to the national team and um, trying to figure out training camps. And uh, the, the travel plan for the summer is, is pretty booked with, uh, with training camps every two to three weeks. Um, and then, I mean, that's, that's really the focus is going to be doing whatever we can uh, to prepare for Tokyo. So uh, Zoom calls and team meetings and, and breaking down film. And, um, you know, we connect one-on-one -on -one quite a bit with, uh, with our athletes across the country and across the states here uh, just to make sure that they're doing well. And then it's, uh, it's just coming up with that game plan for Tokyo so we can uh, repeat uh, with, with another gold medal. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Tokyo. <laughs> I'll be cheering for y'all. But um, let's see, just a few more for you here. I... I'm wondering, do you have like a couple tips or something going back to junior level athletes as we kind of wrap up um, tips or things that you would encourage junior level high school kids to work on um, in order to get better and progress towards playing on a college level team? Yeah, so I, I had coached a juniors team in the Chicagoland area. And uh, one of the big things that I pushed with those guys is do something that makes you feel uncomfortable out there on the court. And for a lot of them, it was using their left hand. Most people are right-hand dominant, so every time they'd go in for uh, a layup on the left-hand side, they'd be using their right hand. Uh, and for me, it was in order to progress as an athlete, whether you're at the junior level or junior level looking to go to college, it's being able to use your dominant and your non-dominant hand. So that's where the uncomfortableness comes in is, is using your left hand. Uh, and we used to, on my juniors team, and some of my guys here at Auburn will tell you, 
I'll still celebrate a missed left-handed layup if they're using their left hand because they actually use the correct hand in what they do. Um, and I think if you have that mindset where it's, Hey, this is a little uncomfortable for me. I'm not, I'm not used to, I'm not used to handling the ball and being the point guard, or I'm not used to going down to the block to try to post somebody up. If you can add something like that into your game where you can get used to being uncomfortable, it'll make you not just a stronger athlete, but a stronger individual. Cause then when you're asked to go on, on podcasts or, or talk in front of a large group, if you're not comfortable with that, uh, now you're putting yourself in a situation where you know you can overcome things uh, because of something as simple as using your left hand when you're right hand dominant. Definitely, definitely. I heard I had a, a couple soccer players say that. So you just kick with your left foot. And that was the only thing they said in their response to that answer. Like, what advice would you give to young athletes? Just kick with your left. That was it. Yep. <laughs> but same thing. <laughs> awesome. Um, last question. I end all of my shows on advice. So what is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self before you started kind of navigating this wheelchair basketball world? Um, I would say trust and have faith in yourself. Um, as, as kind of I was going through things, there's a, a number of different times where uh, people were telling me, hey, you know what, no, there, there's no future for you in wheelchair basketball, or uh, you need to find a job that's going to help you support your family, or you, know, you, you should look to go in this direction. And uh, my gut always told me, no, I want to do something that I love. Um, and you know, while my path may not have been direct to get to this job here at Auburn, and there may have been some detours along the way, um, it was kind of uh, that focus of always pushing forward and, and believing in yourself and listening to your gut that's, that's helped me get to the position that I'm at today. So um, people may try to deter you and, and try to send you one direction or the other, depending on what they think is best for you, uh, but ultimately trust yourself uh, because you know uh, you know what you want to do, you know where you want to go, and you're the only one that can help get you there. So uh, trust yourself, trust your gut. That's great advice. I love it. Perfect note to end on. Uh, Coach Rob, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. And hopefully some younger athletes listen and get some advice and go on to play wheelchair basketball in college. But thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thank you again for having me on. And, and for any of the young athletes that, that are watching, uh, the opportunity to play at the college levels out there, whether it's here at Auburn or, or one of the other great programs across the country. Um, the NWBA has great resources online where you connect, connect with, with myself uh, or any of the other coaches uh, at the university you may be interested in. So I'd encourage you to look at the website and, uh, and reach out to different coaches and don't hesitate. Even if you have a simple question like, Hey coach, what can I do to improve this part of my game? Um, it, you should get a response from most coaches um, and then you can kind of continue your relationship with those, those college coaches at that time. But Aggie, I appreciate your time and, and thanks for asking me uh, on the show this week and War Eagle. Rob, thank you so very much for coming on the show. Appreciate your time and hope that everybody listened and hopefully somebody will go out there and play collegiate level wheelchair basketball. Stay tuned for more episodes of Adventures with Aggie coming up soon. Thank you.